the Thessalonian thanksgiving. Whereas it is the duty of all nations and acknowledge the providence of Almighty God to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God. Life is busy. It's and always has been. I know we look back at life 200 years ago as if it were more simple and less demanding. But imagine trying to put together a new country from the ashes of war. The effort probably required some overtime for George and the Continental the Congress, don't you think? Yet in the middle of the mess, they knew it was time for a day of rest and remembrance, a day to refocus and give credit where credit was due. Likewise, our days are busy and complicated. There is no doubt about that. Some of us spend lots of time and energy trying to figure out what he, the will of God is for our future as I am sure the founding fathers that did for their country. But then Paul closed his first letter to the Thessalonian. He simplified God's will for us considerably. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Is it possible that in trying to figure out his perfect plan for the future, we miss his will for us right now? Joy, pray, thanksgiving. God's will is that we enjoy him, talk with him, and appreciate his moment by moment. God of all, I praise you that in your presence is fullness of joy, that he lines of communication between us are always open. Right here, right now, I give you thanks for all. By faith, I trust you in every circumstance in my life with sincere gratitude. Amen. Your holiday stress poster. For as much as it is the in, uh, in the dependable duty of all men to adore the supernatural in the superintending providence of Almighty God to acknowledge with gratitude their obligation to Him for benefits received and to implore uh, such further for their blessings as they stand in need of. It is therefore recommended to uh, the legislative or executive powers of these United States to send a party Thursday, the enlightened day of December next for solemn, solemn thanksgiving and praise. Giving thanks to God is clearly appropriate, isn't it? It's just right to acknowledge with gratitude our dependence on Him for benefits received. For those of us who are learning and living the, the mystery of being in Christ, those benefits received are amazing. Why wouldn't we want to thank Him for them all the time? But giving thanks to God also has some nice side effects to, for us too. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. 
the Lord is near. Do not be an an uh, anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks is a major stress buster, but you probably have to experience this to truly believe it. But in the middle of your stress, counting blessings makes a big difference. I am really glad that we have a national day of Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Definitely appropriate, but with meals, travel, relatives, and all the holiday of Thanksgiving can cause stress. Remember the act of giving thanks diminishes that stress. God of peace, I stop right now to give you thanks not just because you deserve it, but because I need it. As I bring my specific request to you now, fill my mind with the long, long list of things big and small that are, that are your perfect gifts to me. Above all, thank you for your son, for what he did for me, and that I am in him. Amen. Your antidote for sin. Thanksgiving is the antidote to sinful behavior. Philo was a philosopher who lived both before and after Jesus. He was a brilliant guy living in the most incredible period of all history. I looked up the word antidote in the dictionary. It says a remedy which can uh, counteract the effects of a poison or anything that counteracts evil. Mm. Do a little philosophizing of uh, your own on this. Did you know that Thanksgiving is an antidote that counteracts evil? I am not talking about the holiday. I am talking about the process of giving thanks. Thanksgiving is a sin buster. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly love children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you there must be there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people nor should there be obscenity foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place but rather thanksgiving the word Paul uses for thanksgiving is this passage is the Greek word Eucharisto, the same word from which we get Eucharist, another word we use for the Lord's Supper and Communion. Philo would have used the same word when he said that Thanksgiving is the antidote for sinful behavior. Interesting. Paul and Philo say that Thanksgiving is to be the replacement of sin and a big part of our Thanksgiving is remembering the shed blood and broken body of Christ for our sin. Quiet simply, when we are attempted by or involved in immoral sex, greed or any kind of impurity, giving thanks can replace it. Thanksgiving is the antidote to sin, one way of escape God, God has provided out of temptation. Father of forgiveness, I thank you for Jesus' sacrifice for my sins. 
you promise that when I am tempted, you will provide a way out. Replace the loss and greed of my heart with overflowing praise and thanksgiving for all things. You have given, especially the personal sacrifice of Jesus for me. Do this again and again, each time temptation comes my way. Amen. Hallelujah. Quick reminder. The word is weary and it may be hard to focus on the one we are celebrating this Christmas. That's why we have put together to help remind you that there is still a reason to celebrate this Christmas. But December is just days away, which is why we want to make sure to celebrate Advent, the message of Jesus and experience life. Give thanks today. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are uh, so, uh, so horning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent father who dwelt in the heavens and i recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such a signature singular deliverance and blessings they do also with humble patience Wow, that about says it all, it doesn't it? While the smoke and blood of the U.S. Civil War was bellowing and flowing, Lincoln called everyone to, to a day of thanksgiving and praise, just as Paul calls those who are in Christ to live lives of continual uh, gratitude. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. My prayers of all of uh, us today echo the words of these men. May those of us who have received him continue to live our lives in him, offering up the credit justly due to him for each singular deliverance and blessing with humble patience and overflowing thankfulness. I will just let you pray this one through on your own, okay? My God and my provider, from the depth of my heart, I thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's be grateful together. Today and every day we have so much to be thankful for. There is food and shelter, love and laughter family and friends, and the extraordinary grace of our Savior, Jesus. In Him we know God's goodness and love. In Him we know God's long-enduring faithfulness. In Him we know that the Lord is God, and that we are held as His people forever. May our hearts overflow with thanksgiving and praise today, filled by His Spirit through the words of Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him and joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thank uh, thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good and
and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. God is good as we journeyed together this holiday season. We pray more and more that you and your loved ones will experience the abundant life found only in his son Jesus. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. The unpopular truth. How well I have learned that there is no fence to sit on between heaven and the hell. There's a deep, wide gulf, a chasm, and in that chasm is no place for any man. To be honest, I really don't like preaching hell, fire, and brimstone. It always reminds me of red, puffy-faced, bald men with the nectis that are way too tight. The problem with that is the Bible teaches hell, fire, and brimstone and we have to be committed to be seekers of true belief even when the truth is uncomfortable and while we can avoid the yelling the red faces and the neck neck teeth that are too tight we can leave as gracious warnings to those headed in the wrong direction Jesus often warned those around him as in this unnerving story he told. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in, in hell, buried in hell where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. There are many lessons to be learned from this passage, but the glaring message is this. There is a heaven, there is a hell, and after that it's impossible to move from one to the other. An eternal barrier is fixed between these two places, and the decisions we make, we make on earth will determine where we spend eternity. Lord Jesus, thank you for the clarity of your word. Thank you for telling us the truth. Today and in the days ahead, give us grace and mercy and wisdom as we contemplate the eternal future of ourselves and those around us. Amen. Heavenly minded and earthly good. Maybe there is no actual place called hell. Maybe hell is just having to listen to our grandparents' breath through the, their noses when they are eating sandwiches. Jim Carrey is a good comedian, but an awful theologian. 
Is it possible to be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly good? I don't think so, actually. Having the truth about heaven in our mind puts everything else in perspective. Throughout the Bible, we find various snapshots of heaven, a place of joy, a place of reward, a place of peace, a place of righteousness. Heaven is indescribable. When we step out of the time-space dimension of this crowded up and fallen world, nothing on earth will compare to that. It's everything that's good and beautiful going on forever and ever. The Bible also speaks of a new heaven and new earth that will be ours to enjoy and explore. Revelation 21 to 22 also give a wide, a wide, wide world picture of this place. But ironically, the Bible is actually most explicit about what heaven will not be like. No more pain, no more tears, no more death, no more night, and no more Satan. For those who are in Christ, this certain future up there is great encouragement for living down here. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things about where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things about, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. I don't know about you, but this eternal perspective on you, our future changes the way that I look at today. Jesus, focus my thoughts on things above and not on earthly things. May the hope of expectation of heaven and the fact that my life is hidden with you in good in God right now direct my mind, my will, and my emotions today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Finding God in times of uncertainty. We often do things to try and feel closer to God and hear the, see, uh, to see Him at work around us. But there are times when it feels like God is far off and seemingly missing. The Bible gives an answer for how to respond when God feels so very far away. Experience a thrill of hope. Remember the words of the great Christmas hymn, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pinning, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope. The weary soul rejoices, for young, uh, yonder uh, breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born. Many of us desperately need a thrill of hope right now. Jesus himself is that source of hope for our weary world. He tells us, come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. While we wrestle with ongoing challenges, our Lord walks with us and reveals himself to us all the more. Jesus is our glorious morn and unshakable hope. To help you embrace and experience that hope this Christmas and to thank you for your gift today, we would like to send you Stuart and Jill's 25 Days Advent Devotional 
meet him at the manger as well as the companion audio version read by Jill Berisco herself. These resources will help you focus on Jesus, the reason you weary, your weary soul can rejoice. Hallelujah, Amen. The truth about heaven and hell, it's not that life is too short, it's that eternity is so long. I could talk about heaven all day long, hell on the other hand, not so much. Why not focus on the positive? Well, for one thing, Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven, so it sure couldn't hurt to take a look into this unthinkable abyss in order to get a little bit of perspective of living to, for living today. Hell is torment. Hell is darkness. Hell is bottomless pit. Hell is continual and eternal. Hell is the opposite of heaven. Heaven is all good. Hell is all evil. When you are deciding between hell, heaven and hell, it's not like you are deciding between Dallas and Chicago. The choice is more Maui and an op oppressive refuge camp. If we truly believe this, then I guess we have to give the red-faced sign holding street preachers a little credit. Maybe they are just trying to scare the hell out of people, which is by comparison better than sitting by as a people unknowingly head there. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. God sent Jesus into this world on a mission not to condemn it but to save it. He, no, he now calls us to be a part of the same mission, sharing a message of salvation rather than pointing fingers of judgment and condemnation. The truth about hell is definitely a part of that message. We need to remember that and by the power of His Spirit in us, we can communicate that to others in a way that points the way to grace, mercy and hope. Holy Spirit, through my words and my actions, live through me in such a way that those around me sense the eternal danger of hell and recognize the incredible gift of your eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.